Um, what I'd like to do is show you guys how to graph a, uh, a absolute value function, all right? And then also to find the domain and range. So first thing you wanna do, whenever you're uh, graphing, it's you know always easiest, guys, to make a table of values, all right? Um, now there's a couple ways you know we could do this, but I always think you know graphing table values, especially with absolute value functions, very simple. So what I'm gonna do for this problem is I'm just gonna say, all right, let's just pick a couple points. So we have x and y. Let's just pick a negative two, zero, and two. So what I have when I plug in a uh, negative two, I have g of negative two equals absolute value of negative three times negative two. Well, negative three times negative two is a positive six. Absolute value of positive six is equal to six. G of zero equals absolute value of negative three times zero equals absolute value of zero, which is zero. Then we do the last one, g of two equals negative three times two equals absolute value of a negative six, which is equal to six. So therefore, I have three points. Um, you know, you might have to use more depending on your problem, but I'm just kind of giving you like a basic kind of overview of graphing. Um, and with an absolute value, I know that my vertex that they say, like the bottom of my V is at zero, zero, because I'm not doing any shifts left or right with this function. You can see this is just going to be a, um, a compression or an extension, which is what I have here. So now what I'll do is I'll just plot these points. Okay, so I just plot the points. Negative two, six. Negative two, up six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Then I go over here, two, up six. And my other point is zero, zero. And I know I'm supposed to go to that point. So what we have here is a very common, our absolute value, what we say our V for you know absolute value graph. Um, you can notice that it has been compressed. All right, and that's because our three is inside of um, our say, um, our three is greater than the the value of three, not that negative sign. But oh shoot, um, yeah, the value of our three is greater than um, greater than the one, so therefore it's compressing it. And one thing you guys might notice is you say, oh well, hey, there's a negative sign. Why isn't that you know reflected? Be careful, that's only when we have a reflection outside of our function do we reflect it about the x-axis. Since this is inside of our function, we're reflecting about the y-axis, which you can notice that this is a, um, this property is, or I'm sorry, this function is reflexive over our y-axis, so you're not gonna see the, actually that reflection. And so now we need to find our domain and range. So if you guys can remember, domain and range. Domain tells us all the x values that are gonna uh, be true for our function. So if you notice, the domain, domain, this graph is going to extend up and to the left. So therefore, as it goes on to infinity, it's gonna keep on going left. And as it goes over to the right, it's gonna keep on going over to the right. Or to infinity, it's gonna keep on going to the right. So therefore, I can say my domain is from negative infinity to infinity. However, the range, my F, the y values of each one of these points are never gonna get below zero. It goes to zero, then it pops right back up. So I can say the range is from zero to infinity. And that's how you graph an absolute value function.